One of the reasons why we're standing in the field that we're in right now is last year we had some flooding problems down here and we had incredibly disappointing corn yields. Now the flip side of that is we had fertilized for probably 180 bushel corn. We got maybe 100 bushel corn because the flooding down here that left a bunch of nutrients for our soybean crop. Now the exact opposite thing happens on most farms, maybe yours, where you fertilized for 180 bushel corn and guess what you got? 200. And then you think, well, I should have some extra fertilizer left over for the soybeans the next year. I don't think so. The biggest problem that we see in soybean fields all across the country is under fertilization. Well, it's not just soybeans. This year the problem is turning to corn as well with high prices of phosphorus and potassium fertilizers and with crop prices not at the record highs that they were uh, a few months back, all of a sudden you start thinking, well, man, I got to cut some costs somewhere and a thousand dollar phosphorus, that sounds like something I should cut <laughs> out a little bit. Yeah, but here's the thing that we always like to take a look at when we're making fertilizer decisions or fertility decisions on our farm. It is what are the crop nutrient needs for that particular crop and our yield goal. So what we're gonna put up on the screen for you here is 200 bushel corn, 60 bushel soybeans, and 80 bushel wheat, and what we need for the major nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and sulfur. And as you take a look at this, these are actual nutrients that we're taking out of the ground just for the crop and just for the grain, I should say. Now there's also the stover. I'm not too worried about the stover. As long as you're not bailing your stalks up or, and taking it off the field or you're cutting silage or anything, you really only have to focus a lot on what the grain is removing from the field. And you look at these numbers in terms of actual P and K levels. And so what I'm saying is if you were getting 200 bushel corn and 60 bushel beans and then you're in a two year rotation, you're gonna need roughly 150 pounds of actual P in a two year cycle and about 150 pounds of actual K in a two-year cycle. That's a lot of plant nutrients. All right, I've got to disagree with Brian already, and this is interesting oh, because, man. you know, I think Brian's <laughs> been looking at our fertilizer bill a little too much. He looks at it every day. Oh, man, that was bad. Oh, man, that was bad. Forget about that. It doesn't really matter. You do have to look at what that stover's taking out of the ground, too, and I'll give you a few reasons why. Have you seen some corn tipping over in your part of the country? Well, in many cases, what's happening is we're running a little bit short on nutrients, and all of a sudden, when you're short on something like potassium, your stand is not good. And where is that crop going to put its energy? Into making a nice stalk or into making a nice ear? Well, the object of any plant's life is trying to make seed. So it's going to put the nutrients towards the ear, and what's going to suffer is going to be the roots and the stalk, and all of a sudden you end up with lodging issues. Back in 2003, I had a chance to go to the world record corn growers farm, and I saw tremendous stalks on hybrids that I saw all the way across Iowa falling down. And I said, what's going on? How come your stalks are so much better? It was fertility because we weren't putting on just enough fertilizer for what the grain was going to remove. We we're also making sure we had enough to raise a good healthy stock. So if you're in a situation where you've got good soil fertility already, great. Look at crop nutrient removal. If you're in a situation where you've got really poor soils and hardly any fertility out there, you do need a little bit extra just to make sure that crop's going to stand and wait for you to get there. Yeah, and, and that's kind of my whole point. If you if you have good fertility levels already, bare minimum, you've at least got to put back what the grain is removing or you're falling behind. You know you're falling behind. So even if your soil tests come back phenomenal and you say, well, it looks like I don't need anything this year, you know what? You can get by with nothing this year or you can put out at least what that grain is going to remove. So that's totally your call. And maybe in a year like this year when fertilizer prices are high, you try to get by without. But all I'm saying is if you get by without or you reduce your rates of P and K and the grain is removing more than what you're putting back out there, you are falling behind, no question about it. Well, unless you've been putting manure out for years and years, you do not fall into the category that I've got so much fertility I can mine it. You don't. You may have good fertility, but take one or two years trying to mine that soil and you fall so far behind so fast. I mean, look at the yields of crops we're raising. It's not like the old days when we were raising 80 bushel or 100 bushel corn. We're raising 200 plus bushel corn on a lot of ground. I talked to guys in western South Dakota, and if you haven't been to western South Dakota, it's really tough to raise big yields. But there are guys out there raising 150 to 180 bushel corn on years where they actually get some rain. So it's being done all over. Don't say, oh, that's just a few guys. No, it's being done in a lot of places. When you're raising that high a yield, you're taking so many nutrients out of the ground just in one year mining things, you're gonna fall behind for a long time. So don't fall into that trap. At least keep up 
with crop nutrient removal, if not adding just a little bit more to try and build that soil so it's better and better each year. Yeah, and the way you can verify some of this stuff is continuing to do good soil testing and also do tissue analysis. If you are not doing plant tissue analysis on your farm, we think you're missing the boat. On our farm, I can tell you, when we started taking some leaf samples, sending them in for results, we started changing our fertility program. We realized we were putting too much nitrogen out and not nearly enough potassium out, and we were just barely getting by on phosphorus. We kind of needed some more, and we were way short on micronutrients. A lot of these things we just didn't figure out till we combined doing soil testing and doing plant tissue analysis. It is ultra important, especially when crop nutrient prices are very high like they are today, You've got a lot of money at stake out on your farm. You gotta try to do things right. Well, we're just talking about the primary nutrients and sulfur right now. So the ones that you need quite a few pounds of out there, but there are a lot of other nutrients that your crop is pulling out of the ground. We're gonna talk more about them on another show, but you do have to focus on a complete fertility program for your farm and make sure you're keeping up with things even at today's high prices. Well, another thing you've gotta keep up with is controlling weeds like our weed of the week. We'll tell you how to stop it coming up next.